Hello and welcome to this biology video by Perfect Scores. This is Preetinder Kaur and we are doing 11th grade biology. In the previous few videos, you might have gone through diversity in the living world where we discussed the different classes and the classification, the phylums in the animal kingdom and the different kinds of uh, species and classifications done in the plant kingdom as well. So we are going to take forward from that and in this video, we are going to kick off from uh, the structural organization in plants and animals. We'll be doing lots of things, morphology and the anatomy of flowering plants. And then we'll go over to the structural organization in the animals. So right now we're going to start with the morphology of flowering plants. What we will be basically doing is descriptions of uh, the structure of the root, the stem, the leaf, uh, the flowers, the inflorescence, the fruit, the seed. Uh, all of these things will be discussed in detail in this video. So right now let's get started and we are going to do the discussion on the root. All right, so you know that uh, in a majority of the dicotyledonous plants, you have a direct elongation of the radical that leads to formation of the primary root. So it's the radical that leads to the formation of primary root. And this is true for most of the dicots. And this grows inside the soil. It also bears lots of lateral roots of several orders. And those can be called secondary roots. And then further roots that are known as the tertiary roots. Alright, so these are the different, let's say, parts or hierarchies that are there in a root. Now, the primary root and its branches, all of this, they constitute a system that we call the taproot system. Alright, so that is the taproot system. And what happens in monocots? The primary root is very short-lived. It dies very soon. And it's replaced by a large number of roots. So that gives rise to what we know as what we know as the fibrous root system. An example of this is in the wheat plant, because wheat is a monocot. An example of this would be a mustard plant. Because mustard is a dicot. Now there's a third kind of system or third kind of roots that is there in plants like grass or even trees like the banyan tree that is known as adventitious roots. Now these roots arise from other parts of the plant other than the main radical. And you can see in a banyan tree, the roots even come out of the branches of the tree. And they also, due to uh, the gravitational force, they come down and they may even enter the ground. So that is about the banyan tree, the grass, adventitious roots are there. Now the main functions of the root system are obviously to absorb all the water and the nutrients from the soil. Second would be to give a proper standing and an anchorage to the plant parts. And the third would be to store the food material and the fourth function is to synthesize some plant growth regulators so those are the functions I'll just um, write down here absorption of the important water and nutrients providing a proper anchorage to the entire plant storing the reserve food material and the fourth one is synthesize some plant growth regulators so those are the four important functions of the root in a plant. The next thing that we have to do is the regions of a root. So let's suppose, let me draw a little diagram over here. Right, so these are the fibers coming out, the secondary roots and then the tertiary roots from the main root. So this is known as the region of maturation.
and these extra hairs that you can see on this these are known as root hairs this is known as the region of elongation because this is the area that keeps on growing and growing this is just a mature area where only the fibers keep coming out that means the root hair now over here at the end you have a region of meristematic activity this is the area that grows further and as it grows further there's an extra cover that comes over it that is known as the root cap so basically you can say that the root is covered at the apex by a structure called the root cap that also protects the tender root as it makes way through the soil so this part is protected by this root cap a few millimeters above you have the region of meristematic activity the cells of this region are really small they are thin walled and have dense protoplasm so cells are small thin walled and they have dense protoplasm in this region of meristematic activity and they divide a lot of times they divide uh, repetitively and the cells just next to this region they also undergo elongation and that is why this is known as the region of elongation the cells usually differentiate and mature and next to this region you have the region of maturation from this region some of the epidermal cells they form these root hairs so let me just write it down the epidermal cells they form into root hairs whose basic function is to simply absorb the water and the nutrients from the surrounding soil so that is about the regions of the root the next thing you need to know about the root in a plant is how uh, can a root get modified in different ways so there are lots of examples available for root modifications but why does this happen sometimes roots they change their shape or their structure so that they can perform other kinds of functions uh, rather than just absorption or conduction of water and nutrients sometimes it can be to give support to the plant sometimes it can be to store food in which case we use those roots as vegetables and in some cases it can be used for respiration and those roots are known as pneumatophores the ones that are used and modified for respiratory purposes as well and these are uh, usually there in swampy areas where there's not much of air in the soil so they need to come out outside of those swamps and they have to grow vertically upwards against the direction of gravity so let's me just put here it's there in swampy areas and then there are prop roots that are used to give support so the best example of this would be the banyan tree where the roots come out and they're known as hanging structures and then you have certain roots called stilt roots these are there in maize and sugarcane and the function of these stilt roots is uh, they come out of the lower nodes of the stem this one comes out of the branches this one comes out of the lower nodes of the stem and again these are for giving the support and then there are some other plants uh, that i already talked about the nematophores an example of this would be rhizophora so these are some of the modifications that are there in the roots there are other than normal functions even if you take the example of a sweet potato or a carrot or a turnip uh, the roots are bigger and more swollen in size that is because they have to uh, keep the food in them they are acting as reservoirs of further energy so that is all that you need to know about the root at the basic level the next organ of the plant that is very very important is the stem so let's get started with the stem of the plant so what are some of the features that can help you distinguish a stem from the root first of all the stem is the ascending part of the axis and it goes uh, it grows vertically upwards against the direction of the gravity 
It has further other organs of the plant like the branches, the leaves, the flowers, the fruits and the stem it develops from the plumule of the germinating seed. Plumule of the embryo of a germinating seed. So that is how the stem develops. If you remember, the root was developing from the radical. This develops from the plumule. Now it develops from the plumule and the stem has few divisions called nodes and internodes. The region of the stem where leaves are born, those are called the nodes. And the region between two nodes, that is known as an internode, the portion between the nodes. The stem also has some extra things known as buds that can be either terminal or auxiliary. And the stem is usually green when it's young and as the plant grows and matures further, it becomes woody and becomes dark brown. The main function of the stem is to spread out the branches that bear the leaves, the fruits and flowers, that means the other organs. And additionally, it conducts a, a system of transference of water and other nutrients that the plants need. And it also performs the function of the storage of food to give support to the entire plant structure, to protect the plant and to help in vegetative propagation. So those are the functions of the stem. Now just like the root gets modified into different structures apart from the common storage of food and support, so does the stem. It may not always be uh, like the same thing in every plant. For example, potato, ginger, turmeric, in these it can be used to store food. So let me put down over here modifications. It can be used for food storage. For example, let's take the example of a potato plant. And it also acts as organs of perination to tide over conditions that are unfavorable for growth. Let's suppose they don't get water for a long time. So they will help the plant to survive. And then to give some support to the weaker plants, they develop structures called tendrils. These are actually from the auxiliary buds. They are very spiral and they help the plants to climb. For example, in grape wines. So they latch on to a proper um, strong support and they keep growing for that. Sometimes they may also develop thorns that are again extensions of the auxiliary buds. They're usually woody, straight and very pointed. They're found in uh, plants like citrus or bougainvillea. And the main function of these thorns is to protect the animals from the browsing, uh, protect the plants from the animals. Some of them they may even become flattened stems or they can become into cylindrical structures that is dependent on their shapes they may contain chlorophyll in such a case and they carry out the important processes of photosynthesis as well and then sometimes plants have underground stems for example grass and strawberry they spread to newer areas and when the older parts die, the new ones are formed. Then in some, some other case, uh, in plants like mint and jasmine, sometimes a lateral branch, it arises from the base of the main axis and it grows for some time. So let's suppose the plant is here and this is the level of the water, level of the soil. And then a plant will grow like this, 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 till it reaches and falls down due to gravity. And over here, it's going to build a newer plant. So that is a way of, um, you know, propagating itself. Sometimes, like in banana and pineapple, the branches, they originate from the basal and the underground part of the stem. They grow horizontally. That means, let's suppose this is the plant. They arise from here. This is the root. They arise from here. They grow in a horizontal fashion and then come out outside of the ground obliquely to give rise to a new plant. So this takes place in case of banana, banana and pineapple. Well, this was in the case of mint and strawberry and jasmine. The underground uh, branches are there in strawberries. 
So that is all about the stem that you need to know at this basic level of 11th grade. That stem, it comes from the plumule of the embryo of a germinating seed. You have nodes and internodes where leaves are born. So if you draw a stem like this, and let's say these are the leaf extensions. So this point and this point and this point will be known as the node. And this area, the shaded area, that is known as the internode. Two kinds of buds, terminal and auxiliary. Many modifications are there. For example, uh, for food, for example, in potato. Tendrils, like in grape wines, that are also part of uh, the auxiliary buds. Thorns, that are part of the auxiliary buds. Example, citrus. Then they can be flattened, they can be cylindrical. They can grow underground for propagation in all directions, like in strawberries. Uh, they can also grow over the ground like a lateral branch and finally it comes and touches the ground for example in mint and jasmine or they can grow horizontally under the ground and then come up to form a new plant for example in pineapple and in banana. So that is all you need to know about this stem and that is all we are going to cover in this video that is uh, information on the root and the stem. So in the next video we will go ahead and start off with uh, the description of the leaf as an important organ of the plant. So thank you so much.